last time we discussed some basic properties of the seismic wavelet. We generate a wavelet or a mechanical disturbance here at the source. Uh, we discussed the idea of uh, dominant frequency, dominant period, the, the fact that the wavelet is a transient. It comes and goes. It has a beginning and an end. And we also noted that the journey uh, that the wavelet can take from the source to the receiver uh, is partitioned along a variety of different, uh, different pathways. For example, we have the direct arrival, and uh, the direct arrival is an event which goes directly, uh, more or less directly along the surface from the source to the receiver, and it has the appearance of a straight line in this time distance plot, and it's these, uh, this time distance plot and the features that we see in the time distance plot are, is a topic that we're going to uh, spend considerable, uh, considerable time on. Uh, in this particular case, because T is just traveling with a constant uh, velocity, and the direct uh, event starts at time T equals zero, we have a, a simple linear relationship between the uh, arrival time on this axis and the uh, source rec receiver offset in the uh, shot record so that the direct arrival is just a straight line with a slope of 1 over V, the surface velocity, or V1, or however you refer to it, and uh, it has a zero intercept. Now, we are going to be looking at this um, reflection event, and uh, the reflection event obeys the, uh, uh, the reflection law, so that, uh, th assuming that uh, we have a constant velocity here, now, now Geology being what geology is, uh, this velocity could vary, and that would change the picture. So, when we when we develop these relationships, in this case for the reflection, we're making some assumptions, and we're always making assumptions when we develop uh, uh, quantitative representations of things. So, have to keep that in mind. And the reflection event, we've got to typically represent a source by an asterisk or a pinwheel and a receiver by a, an inverted delta or a, a del operator. And uh, the source receiver offset is x. Uh, t is just a distance over velocity, a distance traveled over velocity, and you know, depending on what kind of event we're talking about. This could be distances over velocities, so we could have uh, uh, different paths uh, with different velocities. Now in this case the reflection obviously travels from the source to the receiver with a constant velocity using our assumption, and the layer is has a thickness h. So that's the basic symbolic notation. V2 really doesn't come into play for the um, reflection event, although the amplitude of the reflection, remember, will um, be approximately uh, proportional to uh, V2 minus V1 over V1 plus V2, if we didn't have uh, densities. So, distance uh, down to the interface, that would be the length of this path here, would be equal to H over the cosine of, and we'll just refer to it as theta, because theta, theta sub i is equal to theta sub r. The time down to the interface is h over v1 times the cosine of theta. So we're just taking the distance and dividing it by the velocity. And we have this um, uh, distance to the surface and its travel time will be the same uh, as that along the downward path. So the total travel time is just going to be twice uh, what we have over here. So the time down is h over v1 cosine of theta. Time up is h over v1 cosine of theta. So the total two-way travel time would be 2h over v1 times the cosine of theta. So we can, as we all, you, know, you probably remember from your optics, uh, we use the concept of an image source. Uh, we do the same sort of thing in these acoustic uh, representations. So we'll take our source and we'll locate it at a distance uh, equal to h along a line drawn normal. 
uh, on the opposite side of the interface between layers 1 and 2. So we have our image source down here. So we can think of the ray path as being the length of this side of a single triangle. And this angle theta, we can call it theta 1, would be equal to theta i or theta r. So we have a simple relationship here between the, um, uh, the, the length of this side of the triangle is just going to be equal to x squared, uh, the square root of x squared, or d squared would be equal to uh, uh, x squared plus 4h squared, and d would be equal to the square root of that. And then again, we're dividing the distance by the velocity so that we get the reflection time then is equal to d over v1 is equal to 1 over v1 times the square root of x squared plus 4h squared. Now we can take the v1 and we can pull it inside the, uh, the radical here so that we get x squared over v1 squared plus 4h squared over v1 squared. And notice that when x is equal to 0, we have the square root of 4h squared over v1 squared, which is just 2h over v1. So that this is just equal to the 0 offset, would be more or less the straight up and down time. Uh, where t0 squared then uh, would be equal to 4h squared over v1 squared. So we could also represent this parameter here as just t0 squared so that we could rewrite this uh, uh, relationship here as x squared over v1 squared plus t0 squared. So this formula, it, it, we rearrange it, it uh, we can rearrange it into the uh, kind of a general equation for the hyperbola. So we're just manipulating this relationship here uh, into, uh, into this form. And then we can also see where if we look at uh, v1 squared t squared over 4h squared, this would be equal to x squared over 4h squared plus 1. And well, let me back up here. So, so this is the uh, equation of the hyperbola. And typically, we're going to be representing travel times as positive numbers. So we'll be looking at the hyperbola on this side of the plot. Remember, the plot of a hyperbola, we have two. Um, it's basically symmetrical about the uh, x-axis. And then we also have these asymptotes. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but the basic equation of the uh, hyperbola is what we get from this equation. And we're just uh, 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 dividing by, uh, uh, multiplying both sides by v1 squared, uh, dividing by 4h squared, and uh, uh, so on in order to get into this form. Okay, so the general form of the equation of a hyperbola is y minus y0 over a squared. This would be the kind of a formula that you would have encountered in your analytical uh, geometry uh, course. And so we have uh, x, uh, our independent variable, x minus x0 squared over b squared is equal to 1. So we have these four constants, uh, y0, x0, a, and b, and uh, uh, general equation of the hyperbola, the hyperbola that we just looked at, take on this form. Now comparing this equation to the equation that we just uh, noted, you can see that uh, y is equal to t, uh, x obviously is equal to x, y0, well we don't really have a t0 here, we could, we, we don't have it in this equation, so t t0 must, uh, or y0, uh, must be equal to 0. x0 also, uh, we don't have a minus x0 term here, so that must be equal to 0, as we've written it here. And so the equation for the reflection can be rewritten then in this kind of general form, where we have the y0 and x0, or the t0 and x0 um, equal to 0. We have t squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared is equal to 1. And I think you can see here where a is going to be equal to the square root of this, or just 2h over v1, and b is just going to be the square root of 4h squared, or 2h. So the general relationships, the general significance of these quantities a and b, well, let's take a look at y0. y0 would shift the 
symmetry axis for the hyperbolas um, up if it's positive up uh, a certain certain distance in time in this in our case and likewise with x0 it would uh, shift the apex of the hyperbolas out along the uh, uh, x-axis either in the positive or negative direction in the positive direction as shown here a which is 2h over v1 is remember this is the zero offset arrival time this is the straight up and down time uh, and so that's the shortest travel time on, for the reflection event, and that's uh, equal to A, which is equal to 2H over V1, which is equal to uh, T0, or T at X equals 0. So looking at uh, both um, hyperbola, we have uh, both of them separated from the axis of symmetry here by uh, the time A, plus and minus A, and um, so that's that's a general relationship, the general significance of those variables. Now, these asymptotes, the slope of the asymptote, we have a delta x here, we have a delta t here. The slope is delta y over delta x, so that would be equal to delta t over delta x. So the slope is a over b, which is equal to 2h1 over v1 over 2h, which is equal to 1 over v1. And you can see that we have the units here of uh, reciprocal velocity. So, also note that the reflection event becomes linear at the longer offsets, and it converges on the asymptote. Or it starts to look like a line uh, with a slope of 1 over v as it converges on the asymptote here. So, the direct arrival, and here we just stripped out everything. This would be what you would see if you saw a shot record. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit more, you know, in more comprehensive mathematical terms, and we showed both sides of the hyperbola. Uh, this would be what's referred to as an off-end source receiver uh, arrangement. Uh, so we're only seeing one half of the hyperbola. If we did have a split spread, we would see the other half if geophones went out in this direction. But for now, we're just looking at the, this off-end um, uh, with the uh, source located here at x0 equals 0. And we have our direct arrival here. This is the event that travels right out along the uh, surface. And then we have A, which is the time intercept, and that's just equal to 2h1 over v1 is equal to t sub i. I should, can get confusing. I guess t sub i is a better, uh, i is a better subscript here, t sub i for uh, intercept, but you, it could also be t0. Uh, so this is our general equation here. Uh, we did note that uh, the two constants in the general equation for the hyperbola a and b, the ratio of those two two constants gives us the slope of the direct arrival. This uh, uh, delta t over delta x is 1 over v1, and b in this case is equal to 2h. And remember that a again is equal to 2h1 over v1. So just kind of coming back and um, uh, diagramming perhaps the obvious, the straight up and down time here is 2h. So when we're looking at this expression over here, we have v1 squared t squared over 4h squared minus x squared over 4h squared is equal to 1. At x equals 0, we have uh, we would have v1 squared t squared over 4h squared is equal to 1, and this would be equal to t squared. This is actually our t sub i squared, or t0 squared, t at x equals 0 squared. So if we take the square root of that, we'll call it uh, t sub i for the intercept. That's equal to 2h1 over v1. And that was just the, uh, uh, the intercept here. That's our value a. Distance traveled over velocity. This is the intercept time. It is a two-way time because the, the mechanical disturbance, the wavelet, goes down and then back up to the geophone. So we should also consider, you know, the fact that the reflection event becomes asymptotic to the direct arrival. It starts to behave like a straight line. 
So when x in this equation becomes very, very large uh, with respect to the thickness h, the term x squared over v squared becomes much larger than the 4h squared over v squared term. So that we have t squared, uh, say looking at the square of this, being proportional to x squared over v1 squared, or t approximately equal to uh, just the square root of x over v1 x squared over v1 squared. So the direct arrival, remember its uh, equation is just x over v1. And when we look at the reflection path for long offsets, the actual travel path here is kind of approaching that of a straight line. The further we take the source off uh, to the right here, uh, the, the more this reflection travel path approximates that of a straight line. So this is for x much, much greater than h. Uh, we have the reflection time then being approximately equal to x over v1. Uh, approaching the asymptote, the direct arrival. So the parts of the shot record were beginning to unfold for us. We've talked about the um, direct arrival. We've talked about the reflection event. Uh, we've noted that the reflection converges on the asymptote or the direct arrival. And the next time, we're going to take a look at this event here, which is the critical refraction. So you've already learned a lot about the basic time-distance plot. And the next time, we're going to take a um, begin to look at some detail at the uh, critical refraction representation in the time-distance plot. So uh, thanks for joining us, and see you next time.